Olive is a 100% free open source video editor that is still in development, and I really like it. Here's how to use it. So by default, Olive is laid out with four panels. Project, which shows all the assets in use in your project. Effects, which allows you to apply effects and move items around the screen. There's also a media player here. The sequence viewer, which shows you the video that you're actually editing. And the almighty timeline, where all your video clips, audio, pictures, and anything else that you may want to edit will show up. You can press the tilde key at any time to make these panels full screen. These panels are fully movable, resizable, and you can even make each one their own window if multi-monitor editing is something that appeals to you. Now, when you start Olive, a project is automatically generated for you. If you want to make a new project, you can either click this icon here or click on File, New, Project. Now from here we have to make a sequence. A sequence is basically like a project within a project. It can contain anything you want. And you can have as many of these as you want. You can even embed them within each other. Now we see this red arrow with a line show up. This is the playhead. It represents where in the video we are, right being forward in time and left being backwards. We can see the actual time count here. You can move it around by clicking and dragging up in this area. Now, let's import a video. You can do that by dragging the video into the project panel. If drag and drop doesn't work, there are other ways to import things. Now that you have the video imported, drag it onto the timeline. Ding! We have now added a video to our sequence. Alternatively, you can just click and drag a video into the timeline upon startup and it will automatically make a sequence matching the video or image that you import. Now we should discuss playback controls. You can press space to play and pause the video on your timeline. You can also press this button in the sequence viewer to do the same thing. These buttons go back and forth by a single frame, and these buttons go to the beginning and end of your sequence. While playing the video, you by default press L to speed up the playback and J to slow down the playback. You can even play it in reverse using J. You wouldn't think this would be useful, but it's very useful when you want to quickly watch back something you just edited without wasting any time. You can use the left and right arrows to navigate a single frame at a time if you don't want to move your mouse all the way up to these buttons. You can also use the up and down arrow keys to go to the next and previous cut. Now let's discuss editing tools. You have your standard pointer tool, which allows you to select clips on the timeline. The edit tool, which allows you to select parts of a single clip and cut into it. The ripple tool, which allows you to adjust the length of a clip that's cut short without overwriting a clip that's in the way. There's also the Ripple Delete tool, which allows you to delete a clip and bring the surrounding things together, rather than leaving an empty space. This tool also allows you to cut out those empty spaces after the fact. The Razor tool, which allows you to cut a clip by clicking on it. But I much prefer using a keyboard shortcut to cut the clip where the playhead is, which is by default Control k but you can easily change this because why would you use Control k the Slip tool allows you to shift where a clip that has already been cut starts. The Slide tool, slide. The Hand tool lets you click and drag to pan around the timeline. The Transition tool lets you add transitions. Top is video, bottom is audio. Just click on the transition you want, then hover over the cut you want to add a transition to and click and drag. This button just enables and disables snapping. These buttons zoom in and out of the timeline, which you can also do by using the scroll wheel while holding control, or by pressing plus and minus. Side note, if you press control plus and minus, you can change how tall the video clips on your timeline are. This button lets you record audio directly into Olive. This is the add button, lets you add things to the timeline that are generated by the program and not a video file, such as text, solid colors, literally this screen, an audio tone, and noise. You can nest a grouping of objects into its own sequence in order to move them and apply effects to them as if it was one item by right-clicking them and selecting Nest. You can change the speed of a clip by right-clicking and selecting Speed slash Duration. The reverse checkbox reverses the video. Maintain audio pitch means audio won't get pitched up or down with the speed of the video. And ripple changes means it will make changes without leaving gaps because of the difference in the length of the clip. You can disable things. You can unlink the audio and a video of a video. When you select an item on your timeline, it will bring up this menu in the effects panel where you can change parameters about your thing. Usually it's just going to be transform, but depending on the item you selected, there can be more, like the text tool. Now, in transform, all these numbers control something about the position of your item on screen. 
the position numbers here change the placement of it, X and Y. And you can change this by either clicking and dragging on the numbers, entering in your numbers using like your keyboard, and literally clicking and dragging the object around in the preview. Scale changes the size. You can also change this by clicking and dragging on the corners of an object in the preview. And rotation, uh, spin. The anchor point is the center of an object. The opacity is how see-through it is, and blend mode isn't implemented yet. Now for effects. Effects are something you can apply to an object to affect it in some way. For example, those transform numbers are an effect, as well as the text tools options. You could add an effect by clicking here. You can also apply effects to audio. Olive has a large library of effects, so I won't show them all for the sake of time, but feel free to experiment and see what you can make. Controlling the effects is just like controlling the position of an object. Lots of numbers and checkboxes. Keyframing is a key part of video editing that basically allows you to define the parameters of an object, like its position on screen, at two different times, and then the program will change the value between those two points. Now to demonstrate, we'll click this clock button next to position to change its position on screen. Now this middle button adds a new keyframe, and the arrows go to the next and previous keyframe. Now let's move to another point and change its position, either by clicking and dragging in the sequence viewer or literally changing the numbers that define its position. After moving it, we'll automatically create a keyframe for you. And as you can see, it's working. If you don't want your motion being so robotic, then you can either select the keyframes and right click and set it to several presets of smoothing. Hold can be particularly useful. Or create your own custom motion in the graph editor. While it looks quite scary, it's in reality quite simple. You can hold down middle click and drag to navigate here if you get lost, as well as control mouse wheel to zoom. These two lines are the position values that are being changed. To change the interpolation of the motion, we can select a keyframe and click Bezier. This will give us controls to change the curviness of the line, and we can see how this affects the motion in the preview. This really is just a process of trial and error to see what you like best in your motion. And it's not just positioning we can keyframe. Any changeable value in the effects panel can be affected by keyframes, so get wild with it. Now, before exporting our masterpiece, you should know about in and out points. You can press I to make an in point where your playhead is, and O to make an out point. To define an area of a video that you want to export on its own without exporting the whole project. Now you have a shit ton of options for export, but for the most part the defaults will be fine. Maybe just crank the quality a little higher. Lower is better. Because default compression can be a little aggressive. Oh, and clicking and dragging on the edges of these scroll bars allows you to zoom in and out. And that should about cover it. That's the basics of using Olive. Uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful to anybody. I'm trying to get back into the whole video making thing. It's been a hot minute since I did that. Like I said at the beginning of this video, all of it is free, so you should totally check it out if you have any interest in video editing. And uh, whenever masking comes to Olive, I'll make a tutorial on that as well, so that you can uh, take your editing to the next level. <laughs>